Wooing of Football League is back after a league-wide bye for the 4th of July weekend, and we are back in Worcester, Massachusetts for this game as the Worcester Wildcats take on the Glen Swallows Green Jackets. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you have everybody had a great 4th of July. I'm Stephen Earl. Welcome back. This is the New England Football League on the New England Broadcast Network. The Wildcats are coming off a big win over the Rowland Riptide two weeks ago before the league-wide bye, earning their first win of the season. Meanwhile, the Glen Swallows Green Jackets, the 2023 New England Football League North Atlantic Division champions, currently set at 0-2 on the season. Dropping we are week one game against the Middleborough Cobras 18-14, once they had a turnover inside the red zone under two minutes left. They also dropped their home opener against the South Vermont Storm back in week three, 35 to 14. So they're here in Worcester today looking for that first win, while the Wildcats are looking to get to over 500 for the first time here in 2024. So get you after the game, we're ready to go. Kickoff coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go here. The Wildcats won the toss. They defer to the second half, so we'll see the Glen Falls Green Jackets come out first on offense. James Vian going to kick it off. We are underway here in Worcester, Massachusetts. This one, a slight kick. Take number 21, about the 26-yard, 24-yard line. Very good away. And great field position here as he gets out to the 45, and now we'll zoom in here. Get the best possible few we can, as we always do. So once again, we mentioned our pregame, the Worcester Wildcats are coming off a thrilling victory over the Royal Island Riptide two weeks ago before the league-wide bye week. Sending the defending single A champions to one and two on the season. They'll face off against the Southern Vermont Storm at the same time recording this broadcast. Meanwhile, the defending champions, led by quarterback Caleb Condon of the North Atlantic Division, the Glen Falls Green Jackets, are 0 and 2. Coming off a 35 14 loss at home in their home opener to the Southern Vermont Storm a couple weeks ago. So, Glen Falls will officially start with the football at, their own, at the 46 yard line. And we are ready to go here in NEFL 2024, week number four. And on first down, Condon fakes. No, it's a handoff, actually. They didn't get it. It's into Worcester territory, and we'll get you a name here in a moment. It's the Green Jackets have a plethora of running backs here today with them. A lot of guys coming on two different minivans type of buses or something like that. And that is number three with the handoff. It looked like that is James Presido Jr., 2023 NEFL All-Star, who had a great season last year with the Green Jackets. Of course, they defeated the Middleborough Cobras in the championship game last year, 12-6 to in overtime, as Condon found his, his man number... Number 84, John Stazinski, a.k.a. White Moss, for the game-winning touchdown in overtime. Second and five, ball now at the Worcester 48-yard line. Condon again in the shotgun. Looks like he'll be changing the play to the line. Talk a little bit about Condon here coming up here in a little bit. Second down and five. Now Condon handles up again, and here's Presido Jr. coming to the outside, and what a hit there! Big play there by the Worcester defender. Number 20. Let's see if we have a name for number 20 here. We'll get your name here in a moment, folks. We got our thing anything settled here. We start at number four again, the NFL and NABN. I'm Stephen Irv. Apologize for that camera, folks. But I'm name nothing there on that play. Let's see if our roster presented by PA announcer John Brennan has anything for us here. Number 20 for the Worcester Wildcats. That is Stephen Solano. So there you go. Stephen Solano with that big hit there on Presido Jr. It'll be third down and five here. No gain on that second run by Presido. We are just underway here in Worcester, Massachusetts. The Worcester Wildcats and the Glens Falls Green Jackets. Third down and five for Glens Falls. So the Glens Falls right try getting off sides. Condon, plenty of time. Pumps, and now he's rolling out. Throws, pass is knocked away. And so the Worcester defense makes a big stop here on their first drive. They're bringing a fourth down five, and it looks like we're going to see a punt here from the Green Jackets. So, and the Green Jackets coming in at 0-2 on the season, coming off a 35-14 loss to the Southern Vermont Storm. This is not the way they want to start this game. Looking for that first winner here in 2024. As they're going to punt it away here. First possession. As you see the score over top of your screen, fourth and five, 48 yard line. We'll zoom up a little bit, and you got 12:42 left here on the clock. We were asked to zoom in a little more than we usually do, so that's exactly what we are doing. We hope the camera is... Much better than it usually is. We're actually going to have to zoom out here for the punt just to see how this works out. So once you go back to the regular play, we'll go back to the regular zoom. Gives you the best possible view we always do. And a low snap. Gets it away. Nice line drive kick. And this one is going to bounce. And there is number nine, George Smith. He's going to let it bounce. And it's going to bounce right at the about the 13 yard line. That's what Worcester will come out for their first drive on offense when we come back. You're watching the New England Football League right here in the New England Broadcast Network. Wildcats coming out for their first offensive drive in a scoreless game with 12 12 left here in the first quarter. Led by the Tim, formerly known as Bushy. His name is now Tim Carmody. And a quarterback. Last week saw two quarterbacks for the Wildcats. A couple weeks ago saw two quarterbacks for the Wildcats. Here's Carmody in the shotgun on first down. 
And the hand off here comes the outside. There is the birthday boy, Xander Givens Perry, still going. And there he goes, Xander Givens Perry into Glens Falls territory inside the 50. <laughs> Turning 29 years old by the time this broadcast comes out, Xander Givens Perry with a huge run. They're on first down, gain of about 40 yards. Facebook got him confused that his birthday was today, Saturday, July 13th. His birthday is tomorrow, Sunday, July 14th. And Wildcats going no huddle here after that 40-yard run there by, by Gavins Perry. Officially 39-yard run. Getting that extra yard just to boot. And a whistle. Ready to go. First down at the Glitz Falls, 48. And Carmody fakes. Rose to the sideline and over the head of Tim O'Neill. Nothing doing there. So what a start there for the Wildcat offense. Their star running back, the 2023 NEFL All-Star. Xander Givens Perry, a four, they're officially a 39-yard rush. The day before his birthday. And everybody on Facebook, of course, making fun of him because Facebook's telling him today's his birthday. So we will be the first to wish Xander Givens Perry a very happy 29th birthday. About the 11 minute mark here in the first quarter. We're still scoreless. Second down to 10, though, after the incompletion to Tim O'Neill. Ball still at the Glens Falls 48 yard line. Which Perry looks like he's back there in the backfield once again. And they got a fake, and Carmody's going to take it himself inside the 45 to about the 43. A gain of five yards. going to be third down to five here for the Wildcats. So, Wildcats. It's weird, this, we'll, we'll talk about the standings here. The Cobras are the number one team as of right now. They are tied with the Southern Vermont Storm at 3-0, but they are currently listed as the number one team in the NEFL. Storm right behind them at number two. Number three is the Rhode Island Riptide. They are 1-2 and two on this season, and they're out in Southern Vermont taking on the Storm today. Meanwhile, the Wildcats are number four at 1-1. One and one. With the win over the Riptide, you would think that the Wildcats would be the third team in the NEFL, but they're listed as number four right behind those Riptide, who they defeated two weeks ago. A little confusing there on my end anyway. Third down and six here officially. Four yard carry there by Carmody as we reach the 10 minute mark here in the first quarter. And Carmody fakes, throws short, passes, caught. There is the Andre Easter. Easter break it away to the 40 and he's going to be about three yards short of a first down. Again, that is the backup quarterback, DeAndre Easter, if I had the name right. Asante Easter, excuse me. I got the last name right. Asante Easter with the grab. He's about three yards short of the first down. Let's see what the Wildcats decide to do here. On fourth down and three. Nine and a half left here first quarter. We're still scoreless, folks. But it's a beautiful day here in Worcester, Massachusetts. It's a little humid, but beautiful nonetheless. Beautiful day for football nonetheless. Nine and a half now left in the first. Fourth and three officially at the 40-yard line. Let's see if Gruns Falls can make a stop here on defense. And they've got the guys to do it. Including the man you might see there right in the middle, number 44, Todd Barato, who does everything for the NEFL, including graphics. Not just tackling, also graphics. Fourth and three at the 40. Carmody, fake. Oh, he gives it off to give it to Perry. Perry has the first down. Inside the 35 to the 33. On a fourth down and three, gives Perry gets seven more yards, and oh, it's a Wildcat first down. They're moving the chains here on this first drive. Look for a second there, Carmody might have been taking the handoff and running with it, but it was Gavins Perry who took it. He got seven yards on a fourth down at three, and it's a first down for Worcester. And there is number nine at the bottom of your screen, George Smith, who scored four total touchdowns two weeks ago on that win over the Riptide. Three receiving, including the game winner, and he also returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown. Fast start for Worcester two weeks ago. Carmody on first down, pumps. Chucking it down the sideline. Another man wide open. There he is, Smith. Pass is caught. George Smith inside the five. And I might have missed that play, but I do apologize. We'll get him next time. But it's a first and goal for the Wildcats. And they're placing the ball at the three-yard line. That is a 30-yard pass play from Carmody to Smith. He's easily becoming his top receiver here in 2024. So first and goal once again for the Wildcats. If we didn't miss that play, we do apologize profusely, folks. 
But now it is first and goal for the Wildcats at the Glens Falls three yard line. And Carmody hands off, Givens Perry at the middle, and Givens Perry is in for the touchdown. Danny Givens Perry gets the Wildcats on the board first. It's six nothing Worcester. Seven thirty-one left here in the first. Givens Perry, this final day of year twenty-eight, scoring the first touchdown here tonight. Led by the 30-yard pass from Carmody to George Smith. Now comes James Viana on for the extra point, make it 7-0. High snap, and the kick is... Good. Stand against Perry, the man, the myth, the legend. Scoring the day before his 29th birthday gives the Wildcats a 7-0 lead. We'll be right back. You're watching the NFL and NBN. 7-0 Worcester. Seven and a half left here in the first quarter. You're watching the NFL and NBN. I'm Stephen Irwin. We're here at General Foley Stadium in Worcester, Massachusetts. And another sir kick here by Viana. Take by number 13 for Glens Falls. Cutting to the outside. We'll zoom back in now as we get ready for this next play. And now flat comes out. Ball might have come out as well. And looks like the Wildcats might have it. No signal there from the referees. Let's find out. There is a flag down, so hold everything, folks. Wildcats celebrating like it's their football. But there is a flag down, so let's check the marker. No signal yet. It's a hold against Glens Falls. The penalties decline. It's Worcester football. The Wildcats have recovered the fumble. And again, not the best start here for the Glens Falls offense. They're not getting much done here. After going 3-0 on their first drive, they fumbled the ensuing kickoff after the Wildcats score. And now Worcester has the chance to extend their lead early on here. And the fumble is by number 13, Isaiah McLaughlin for Glens Falls. We are at the 7-19 mark here in the first quarter. 7 up in Worcester. They now have the ball at the Glens Falls 39-yard line. So let's see what they can do here on this drive. 30-yard pass from Carmody to George Smith. Set up a 3-yard touchdown to Xander Givens Perry on the first and goal on the first drive. Let's see what they do here. Let's see if they have another quarterback. It doesn't look like they do. Here's George Smith coming in on the bottom of your screen. Again, he had the 30-yard catch to set up that first and goal. Givens Perry is in the backfield. Third, first down for the Wildcats at the Glens Falls 39-yard line. Marion Rosario coming in motion. They're going to give it here to Givens Perry, cutting up the middle. And he gets to about the 35, gain of four. Once again, folks, the standings are stand as follows. I did not finish the whole standings. I was talking about the controversy between the Rock, the Riptide, and the Wildcats. The Cobras are the number one team as of right now, but that will change if the Storm defeat the Riptide tonight out in ben Bur Bennington, Vermont. Cobras then drop to number two. Number three is the Riptide, who are playing the Storm. Currently one and two on the season. The Wildcats are number four at one and one. Number five is the Bombers, who are playing their first game in two weeks tomorrow against the Vermont Ravens. Number six is these Green Jackets sitting at 0-2, and the 0-3 Vermont Ravens are number seven. A lot can change after the outcomes of these games tonight. Gain of four there by Gibbs Perry. Second down at six. Six and 6.20 left here in the first quarter. Rosario coming to motion again. Carmody's going to hand off again to Gibbs Perry, and this time he is bought down Maybe got a gain of one on that play. Great play there. Let's see number 11 with coming in on the tackle there. That is Tony Green Jr. Familiar name with the Glens Falls Green Jackets as we reach the six-minute mark here in the first quarter. 7-0 Worcester. You're watching the New England Football League on the New England Broadcast Network. I'm Stephen R. General Foley Stadium, Berkshire Bank Field at Foley Stadium to be precise here in Worcester, Massachusetts. As you see there is Givens Perry coming on out. Once again, I want to be the first to wish Danny Givens Perry a happy 29th birthday. Of course, it's not just Givens Perry's birthday. We'll get to that in a moment. We have a shared birthday coming up tomorrow, July 14th. Five and a half left first quarter, seven out to Worcester. Third down and five now from the 34. Carmody fakes, throws there. Smith again with the catch. And Smith breaking away from a tackle. Finally brought out of bounds inside the 25. 
And that's going to be a first down for the Wildcats. So as we mentioned, Danny Gibbs Perry is not the only birthday they're having tomorrow, Sunday, July 14th. We have another birthday that Danny Gibbs Perry shares with one of his teammates. And his name is, on Facebook, it's the Crash Osu. Oso. He'll be 34 years old tomorrow. So we wish both of them happy birthdays. As uh, There was a flag that flew out somewhere. They picked it up, though. And we continue on with the action as we reach the five-minute mark here in the first quarter. 7 up in Worcester. George Smith's second catch of the afternoon. Bringing the ball to the 25-yard line. And there's Smith again at the bottom of your screen. Three receivers up top, though. Let's see if Kamadi, Kamadi looks that way. First down at the 25 for the Wildcats. 4.40 left first quarter. Kamadi hands off. Number 20, the running back, taking the handoff. He's cutting away. Still going inside the 5th, 20, down to the, the 16-yard line. Impressive run there by the, another running back, number 20, here for the Wildcats. See if we have an A for him on my roster. If you have any from the other roster, we're given, given by PA announcer John Brennan. And there he is again. There's Steven Solano, who had the big hit earlier on in this game. Only on defense, he gets the handoff there for the Wildcats. We're about to reach the four minute mark here in the first quarter. Worcester still leads 7 0 over the Glens Falls Green Jackets. Watch the New England Football League and the New England Broadcast Network. I'm Stephen R. Second and one, officially a nine yard gain there by Solano. Body fakes, pumps to the end zone, throw and has a man, it is incomplete. Intended for Smith, who almost came up with that one, could not, he had his hands on it, just went right through his fingertips, and it will be third down and one here for the Wildcats. 3.31 left, the clock is stopped with, we got 3.31 left here in the first quarter. Now clock continues to run. We are at a three and a half left here, first quarter. Wildcats facing a third down and one at the 16-yard line. Again, Carmody's pass incomplete intended for Smith. Would have been his fifth touchdown in the last two games if he caught that one, but it went right through his fingers. Gibbs Perry back in there in the backfield. Third down and one for the Wildcats. Let's see if they're just trying to pick up the first down here on, on the ground. And a false start. Back him up five more yards. So it'll now be third down and six here for the Wildcats on this second drive. Looking to extend on their seven up the lead with 2.56 left here in the first quarter. Again, we talk about George Smith has four total touchdowns two weeks ago against the run on Riptide. Three receiving, including the game winner, and also returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown. Smith played with the East Coast Cardinals the last two seasons. Found that out during the broadcast last week. Cardinals won the last two East Coast Football League championships. And now again, the clock running again. 2.34 now counting here in the first quarter. Wildcats lead the Grinch Falls Green Jackets 7-0. They face a third down and six after a false start here at the 22-yard line. High snap, Carmody pumps, throws over the middle, passes. It's no signal yet. And they're saying it's a catch and it's a first down for the Wildcats. Diving grab there, looks like it might have been Smith again, but now here come the Wildcats, look at their going no huddle here. And now it looks like they are gonna get it together, everybody's getting together here. We're under two minutes left. Here in the first quarter, a long drive here by the Wildcats. The second one after a fumble, after recovering a fumble on the last kickoff. So the Wildcats run the rest of this quarter out. Glens Falls would have had one drive. And that was a very short drive at that. So first and 10 to fit officially ball at the 11 yard line. So Wildcats can get a first down without getting a touchdown. Armadi over the middle, end zone touchdown! And there he is, Asante Easter, his second touchdown in the last two games. 
The Wildcats extend their lead. It is now 13 to nothing. Easter originally listed as a backup quarterback. His second receiving touchdown in the last two games. He had one two weeks ago against the Rhode Island Riptide. He has one there. Wildcats have extended their lead. 116 left here in the first. 13 nothing Worcester. Now again, here comes Bianca on for the extra point. High snap. Uh, looks like somebody jumped offside somewhere. Kick is good. Asante Easter, his second touchdown in the last two games, and the Wildcats have a 14 nothing lead. 116 left in the first. We'll be right back. You're watching the New England Football League. We're here in the New England Broadcast Network. 14 nothing Worcester over Glens Falls here in Worcester, Massachusetts. You're watching the New England Football League on the New England Broadcast Network, and here is another kick here, picked up by McLaughlin, who fumbled on the last kickoff return for Glens Falls, cut it to the outside, and gets to about the 43-yard line. So. Let's follow their second drive here in the quarter with 107 left in the first quarter. They put it on their first drive, and then on the two kickoff, they gave it away. And it looks like we have a Wildcat down. We'll step aside. And there he is, number 48, Tony Porter. Looks like he might have been the man down, but he comes away with the football. No fumble there. He's just coming away with the football. Back in a sec. Glens Falls looking to put something together here. Down 14 or nothing against the Wildcats. 107 left here in the first quarter. You're watching the New England Football League on the New England Broadcast Network. I'm Stephen Err. Caleb Condon and the quarterback. He has two running backs in the backfield with him. And Condon fakes. Pumps throw up the sideline and pass is incomplete intended for there is the hero of the 2023 season, John Stasinski, a.k.a. White Moss. He caught the game winner in the 2023 New England Football League North Atlantic Division Championship game against the Middleborough Cobras, securing a 12-6 overtime victory. He can't secure the catch there and bring up second down and 10 for the Green Jackets. Talk about week number one. Green Jackets were in Middleborough for a rematch of that 2023 Maritime, uh, excuse me, New England Football League North Atlantic Championship game. And inside the red zone, down by four. Green Jackets fumble the football away, giving the Cobras an opening win. Second and 10. And a handoff here. Can't see the number. Looks like there's McLaughlin on the handoff. And he'll get to about midfield, and that might take us to the end of the first quarter. We have about 30 seconds left. And a recording of this broadcast, the game of the week is out in Bennington, Vermont. As the South, South Vermont Storm take on the Rhode Island Riptide. We'll see the Riptide in two weeks' time as they host those Middleborough Cobras who are off this week. The only team in the seven-game league. Seven-team league, excuse me. Let's see if the Green Jacks get one more playoff here before the end of the quarter. Down to the last seven seconds. And it doesn't look like they will. Let's see. And they do not. End of one. The Worcester Wildcats lead. The Glens Falls Green Jackets 14 nothing. We'll be right back for the second quarter. You're watching the New England Football League right here on the New England Broadcast Network. Start of the second quarter, everybody. The Worcester Wildcats lead. The Glens Falls Green Jackets 14 nothing. You're watching the NFL and NABN. I'm Stephen Irwin. We are here in Worcester, Massachusetts for this one. We will the last wish everybody a happy 4th of July. On third down and three. Handoff here to McLaughlin. And he got tripped up at the last second, but it looks like he got enough for a Glens Falls first down, and that's going to be their first first down of the game. And there you go, rough signaling. It is first down, Glens Falls. Again, that is their first first down of the game. We just start starting the second quarter, everybody. So we welcome you in. I'm Stephen Irv. We are here at Berkshire Bank Field at General Foley Stadium here in Worcester, Massachusetts, the second biggest city in all of New England. And that includes Hartford, Portland, Maine, Lewiston, Maine, even Bennington, Burlington, Vermont. And Manchester, New Hampshire. And Providence, Rhode Island. I think I go to the big cities. <laughs> First down at the 42 yard line for the Green Jackets. Two receiver, two running backs in the backfield. There goes Tzinski in motion. Condon fakes pressure off his back foot, still rolling out. And he's going to gain nothing. He's going to go backwards, actually. Looks like he lost the. Quite the amount of yards there, trying to find something open. He got absolutely nothing. Pressure was coming from the right side, and actually just stepped out of bounds. And that's going to be a loss of seven yards on that play. So second down and 17 coming up for the Glens Falls Green Jackets. So we talk about the Stormer hosting the Riptide. We have other games in week number four. We have the Ravens hosting the Bombers tomorrow. The Bombers' first game since June 22nd. 
And of course, we're here in Worcester as the Wildcats take on the Green Jackets. Currently up 14 0 with 1347 left here in the first half. And the Middleborough Cobras, the currently number one seed in the NFL, are off this week. They'll be back next week to take on these Green Jackets out in Glens Falls, New York. A real rematch of the 2023 championship game as the game was held in Glens Falls. So again, a loss of seven on that play by the... I don't know where I would call it. A run by Condon? I don't know. But Condon's calling a timeout. We're going to take it with them. We're right back. You're watching the New England Football League. We're here in the New England Broadcast Network. And speaking of the Cobras, look who decided to join us today with the Army hat. That is Norton. So as I said, the, speaking of the Cobras, look who joined us here today with the Army hat. That is Norman Burns Jr. And with the black beanie, there's Roger Dilliam, defensive back and wide receiver from the Middleborough Cobras, the number one overall team in the NFL, respectively. Welcome to Worcester, guys. Glad to have you with us. Oh, out of the timeout, 13-24 left here in the first half. The Worcester Wildcats lead the Glens Falls Green Jackets, 14-0. Second and 17 after Condon stepped out of bounds, losing seven yards, trying to find a somewhat open. Condon throws short, pass caught. There's White Moss, Tuzinski breaking off some tackles inside the 40, down to the sideline. John Tuzinski all the alone, touchdown, Glens Falls. The hero of the 2023 North Atlantic Division Championship game scores his first touchdown here tonight. And the Green Jackets are on the board. It's now 14 to six. Condon Fing finding his favorite receiver from last season. On a short pass. And so after a seven yard loss to start the drive, the next, very next play, second play, Condon hooks up with Tuzinski. And the Green Jackets have closed the gap in half. Now see if their kicker can bring on the extra point to really bring this one, really cut this one in half here. Thirteen eleven left here in the half. It's fourteen to six after that touchdown from Condon to White Moss, John Tuzinski. The kick is oh running into the kicker. There's gonna be a couple gonna be flagged there for that one. And let's see. I think they're just gonna take the penalty here and take the extra point. I believe the extra point was good. The kicker went down. He looks like he's still down. This is not a good sign. He saw the pressure coming from the right side once again from the Wildcats. Saw that on another play. All oh, well, well, the attend to the kicker. We'll uh, step aside. We're here in the New England Broadcast Network. And so after the penalty, the extra point was good, by the way. It's now 14-7 Wildcats. Glenn Falls is kicking off from midfield. Nice kick there. And now one is going to... Be taken out of the end zone here by the Wildcats. We're going to zoom in and find out what happens here. And still going to about the 14-yard about the line. So that's where Whistler will start this next drive up 14-7. to You're watching the New England Football League. or here in the New England Broadcast Network, everybody. I'm Stephen Err. We're here at Berkshire Bank Field at General Foley Stadium in Worcester, Massachusetts. And we have another Green Jacket down, so we'll be right back. So the injury for the Glens Falls Green Jackets looks to be number 57, who we don't have a, we don't have a name for. But he was able to get under his own power, so that's good. Always good to see. Worcester starting this next drive at their own 13-yard line. 12:59 left in the first half. Carmody in the shotgun, gives Perry the backfield, and Carmody throws over the sideline. The pass is caught, and going immediately out of bounds. Looks like number 12 with the catch there. Let's see if we have a name here for number 12 for the Wildcats. And that is Curtis Gordon Wilson. He caught a touchdown two weeks ago against the Riptide in that victory, in that big victory, the first of the year. His first catch there, and he got about three on that one. Ball now at the 16-yard line. Second out of seven coming up for the Wildcats. 12:40 left here in the first half. They lead 14 to seven. They dominated that first quarter, by the way. Glens Falls started their second drive with just one minute left in that first quarter. Did not see much of the ball outside of that. What's to chewed up that clock? So second out seven here, all the 18. And handoff here to Gibbons Perry, cut back in the middle, breaking off some tackles to the 26 yard line. And that should be enough for a Wildcat first down, gain of eight on a second down and seven. So 
But big game out in Bennington, Vermont tonight as the Southern Vermont Storm take on the Rhode Island Riptide. Riptide have a very tough schedule. Of course, the opening loss in which they blew a 25 to 12 fourth quarter lead against the New England Bombers. Bounce back with a 50, 54 to 6 victory over the Vermont Ravens and a shortened game due to Lightning. And then two weeks ago here in Worcester, they lost the game against the Wildcats in which they gave up four total touchdowns to George Smith, including the opening kickoff. Michael Supita Jr. came away with the game ending interception about a minute 15 left. Wildcats defeated the Riptide to end week number three. First 10 ball at the 27. Carmody. So a short pass caught by Smith. Smith has room. At the ball off one defender. Gets to the 40 yard line. It's another first down for the Wildcats. Smith, another catch for him. That's his second. Wildcats moving down the field once again here on this third drive. Look at the score for the third time. So you've reached the 11 minute mark here in the first half. Lentz Falls scoring on their last drive as Condon found his favorite guy, John White Moss Tizinski, for a long touchdown. Score now 14 to 7 Wildcats in favor of the Green Jackets. The Wildcats moving once again, first down at the 40. And a handoff here to Givens Perry. Perry still going inside the 45 to about the 48. He has about an AR gain. Multiple whistles blown there. Ten and a half left here in the first half. And Perry got the Wildcats on the board first. Three-yard touchdown following a 30-yard pass from Tim Carmody, the formerly known as Bushy, to George Smith, who now has three catches here tonight. And there's Gibbs Perry coming off the field. We're going to be the first to wish him a happy 29th birthday. Also, I want to wish a happy 34th birthday to Crash Oso. And I know that's not his real name, but that's the only name I have of him. So we do apologize. We do wish him again a happy 34th birthday. He celebrates tomorrow along with Gibbs Perry, who's over to year 29. Second and two here at the 48. Smith in motion. Carmody pumps, throws, passes caught by Smith. And to the 40, inside the 40, about the 37. The fourth catch for George Smith, who's come alive here for the Wildcats in his first season out of the East Coast Football League. 22 championships with the East Coast Cardinals out of Taunton, Massachusetts, where I believe they, where they play. And it's another first down for the Wildcats. They are now at the Glens Falls 38-yard line. 9-15, count you see top left of your screen here in the first half. Beautiful day here in Worcester, Massachusetts for some football. Lance Falls looking for that first one of the victor first victory of the season. After dropping their week one game 18-14. Having an unscheduled bye week week two after the Mass Warriors were able to play this season. And losing 35-14 in week three to the Southern Vermont Storm in their home opener. First down Worcester ball at the 38. And Kermati hands off here, bouncing off. There's Solano breaking tackles. Solano still going inside the 25. Down to about the 22. And the Worcester running game doing their great job here against this Glens Falls defense. And officially ball at the 21-yard line. So that is a 17-yard game by Steven Solano. And the Wildcats are moving down the field quite nicely here on this third drive. Looking to score over the third time. Wildcats rocking the whites today due to the humidity here in Worcester. Glens Falls wearing their green and green and yellow. First down, eight minutes left, first half. Wildcats lead 14 to seven. Carmody going to the end zone, has a man, it is! Caught! Touchdown Worcester! And there he is! George Smith with the touchdown, his fifth in the last two games. And the Wildcats re-extend their lead to 20 to seven. I mean, we talked about already George Smith, and now there's a flag down, so hold everything. A hold against the Wildcats, so they're going to take this touchdown away. 
for a second there. We thought George Smith had his fifth touchdown in the last two games, but not just yet. A holding call against the Wildcats, bringing it back. 7.43 left here in the first half. 14-7, uh, now you're still your score. Scorber still reads 27, but now they've got to take that touchdown away. A hold against the Wildcats, taking away George Smith's fifth touchdown in the last two games. It'll be first down here. Ball's out officially at the 30 yard line. Seven and a half left, first half. Marty over the middle, over, threw his man, Tim O'Neill. The second time he tried to hook up with O'Neill, and second time he overthrew him. So now officially second down to 20 at the 30. 7 19 left here in the first half again. George Smith. Two would be touchdowns so far in this game. I mean, the first one went right to his fingers. And the second one was called back due to a hold. Now the Wildcats face an uphill battle. The th ball is officially at the 31-yard line. It's second down and 20. And we have reached the seven-minute mark here in the first half. Wildcats slowly 14 to seven, look to extend on their lead. And again, they've done. They did this all the most, just about the whole entire first quarter. They chewed up the clock a whole lot, and they're doing it here again today. We're doing it again here on this drive, at least. Second and 20. And a hand, oh, no, fake. Kamardi throws, pass caught by Easter. And Easter break it away. He gets to a, inside the 25 at the 23. So a gain of eight there. Should be about third down and 12 here for the Worcester. So this is going to be a big stop here for the Glensville defense. They need to make a stop here. They don't want the Wildcats to extend on their lead, heading toward the locker room. We are about to hit the six minute marker in the first half. The third down and 12, an eight yard gain there by Easter. Ball at the 23 yard line. So I've already seen George Smith had a touchdown call back through to a holding call and that's where we stand, where we stand right now. Third down and 12. And there's Smith coming to the bottom of your screen. Tim O'Neill and Easter all at the bottom of your screen. Three receivers set. High snap, Carmody. Rolling out. Throws over the middle. Pass caught by Smith. And Smith inside the 10 to about the 9. And he got just enough for a Wildcat first down. It'll be first and goal from the 9 yard line. And the Wildcats doing exactly what they need to do. Make big plays. Pick up some first downs. They get another one there. First and goal at the nine yard line officially. Now to Smith's fifth catch here tonight. He's reached under five minutes left here in the first half. The Wildcats lead 14-7. They're about, well, they're looking to extend on the lead right now. Glenn Swell's looking to make a big stop here in the red zone. Armadi throws wide open. Touchdown, Easter again. Asante Easter, his second touchdown of the night, and the Wildcats have now officially extended the lead to 20 7. No flags this time. Easter breaking away from defender. Wide open at the goal line, walking in for the touchdown, his second of the night. And with four and a half left, it's 20 7, Worcester. We just got an update from Bennington, Vermont. The road on Ripside currently lead the Southern Vermont Storm 14 to 10. Will be a huge upset if the Rod Riptide can hold that one off. The kick here by Bianca is good. The flag is down. Once again, we're getting an update from Bennington, Vermont. The Riptide leading the Storm 14 to 10. It'll be a huge win for the Riptide. They can pull that one off. The Storm coming off several blowout victories to start the season. 41 to nothing victory over the Vermont Ravens week number one. 28 to nothing against the Bombers, week number two. 
And a 35-14 victory over the Grenzels Green Jackets in week three. And the kick is good. Flag against the Green Jackets. 21-7 Worcester right back. You're watching the NFL and NBN. 21-7 with four and a half left here in the first half. The Worcester Wildcats lead the Glens Falls Green Jackets and another line drive kick here. And this one, it's a fumble on the ground. Picked up at number 27 for the Green Jackets at about the 37-yard line. So once again, folks, if you heard the update from here, courtesy of Roger Dillingham, the, the wide receiver for the Middlebrook Cobras, who's joining us here in Worcester today. The road on the side, currently the Southern Vermont Storm, 14-10. Would be a huge upset here early on in the season if the Riptide can pull that one off on the road in Vermont against the Storm who have come in after a year hiatus just dominating all their opponents thus far. Two shutout victories to start it off and then a 35-14 victory over the East Glens Falls Green Jackets back in week three. Green Jackets looking for that first win of the season. Down by 14 here, 427 left first half. Both teams still have three timeouts by the way. So everybody has their timeouts. Everybody has plenty of time. Let's see what they can do with it. Well, officially at the 37-yard line. First down, Glens Falls. Comes McLaughlin in motion. And again, hand off here to Presido Jr. Cutting in the middle. And finally wrapped up by Nick Selig at midfield and bought down right there. So a bit, that's the first big play for the Green Jackets here today. A 13-yard carry by James Presido Jr. at the first down for Glens Falls as we reach the four-minute mark here in the first half. And Glens Falls looking to avoid an 0-3 start after winning the championship in 2023. Would not be a great start here for them here in 2024. Wildcats looking to get to 2-1 on the season. Especially first down in midfield, about three and a half minutes left here in the first half. And kind of hands on, oh no, he fixed, over the middle, pass is caught. And it's a first down for McLaughlin. Inside Worcester territory to the 37. So a 13 yard gain, another one. Two 13 yard gains here for the Green Jackets, some back to back plays. And now they're starting to show some life here. Apologize for the camera, folks. Trying to get the best possible view we can. We're at the three-minute mark here in the first half. Two back-to-back 13-yard -back plays by the Green Jackets. They have the ball at the Worcester 37-yard line after they started at their own 37-yard line. Two receivers to each side of Condon. Looks like Presido is in the backfield. Condon rolling out to his right. And he's going to run with it. He's going to take off. And he'll get out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. So Condon looked like he was trying to find something open to his right. Could not. And just took off. Gained to about six yards on that one. Clock now stopped. Two and a half left. And so, ladies and gentlemen, if the playoffs did begin today, the Cobras would have the first round bye week. The Storm will host the Ravens. And, of course, the rematch of that week one game. We talked about it. The Storm beat the Ravens 41 0 week one. Now, those two will meet again next week out in Burlington, Vermont, the home of the Ravens on Norwich University. The Wildcats will play the Riptide out in, in Cranston. Of course, we talked about it. These two teams met two weeks ago. They'll meet again in Cranston on August 10th. Get some more of the rest of the playoff picture in a moment. First down at the 34, Glens Falls. Condon fakes. Chucking it. End zone. Two defenders there, and the pass is incomplete. Double coverage looks like it was intended for Tzinski again. He has the lone touchdown here for Glens Falls in this game, and it was Tzinski, the intended receiver. But again, two Wildcat defenders were there, were able to make a play. So as we were talking about, if the playoffs began today, the Cobras will have the first round bye week. The Storm will host the Ravens. The Riptide will host the Wildcats, surprisingly enough. Oh, excuse me, that's wrong. The Riptide will host the Green Jackets. The Wildcats will host the Bombers as of right now. Got a little mixed up here, folks. So, second down. 221 left here in the first half.
Golf and coming to motion. And a flag. Free play here as they're going to call an offside against Worcester. Hand off here to Presido, and he's wrapped up almost immediately. And there is the man. Well-known name here for the Wildcats, Naberto Roland Jr. Come up with that tech on. There was a flag down, but the clock is now running. So it looks like we are going to run it all the way down to the two-minute warning. What's the Wildcats lead? The Glens Falls Green Jackets, 21-7. to seven. Green Jackets knocking on the door. We'll be right back. You're watching the NFL and NBN. Clock officially stopped at 158 left here in the first half. West Wildcats lead the Glens Falls Green Jackets 21 to 7. You're watching the New England Football League on the New England Broadcast Network. I'm Stephen R. We are here at Berkshire Bank Field at Foley Stadium in Worcester, Massachusetts. Looks like it was an offside against the Wildcats. So it's a first down for Green Jackets at the 25. Condon steps up. Pressure. Rolling out. Backing up. Chucking it, has a man in the pass, is intercepted! <laughs> pass is intercepted and the Green Jacket drives, stalls. Here with 144 left in the half, Worcester's offense will take over. With a 14 point lead when we come back, you're watching the New England Football League right here in the New England Broadcast Network. And there's the man that intercepted the football, Ravion Talley, number 13, coming away with that pick. Worcester's offense come back out, up 14 with 144 left when we come back. And just when the Glensville's Green Jackets thought they had something going, Worcester's defense makes a big stop there. Pressure, bringing the pressure on to Condon, forcing them to throw a bad pass, and the pass was intercepted by Davion Talley. And so their offense gets the ball with the 21-7 lead, 144, and all three timeouts, so... Plenty good chance for Wildcats to extend on this lead here toward the end of the half. Let's see what they do here. Three receivers, bottom of your screen. Ball is at the 18 yard line. Con. Oh, the middle pass is caught wide open. It's Curtis Gordon Wilson. A huge gain there, and Wildcats are very well in. On their, well, they're well on their way to scoring a touchdown here at the end of the half. Well, officially at the 43-yard line, so that's a 25-yard game from Carmody to Curtis Gordon-Wilson. That's his second catch here today. And the clock is now stopped, 138 left. Carmody all on the shotgun. And Carmody pumps throws, short pass is caught. There's Matthew Morrison. One of the new receivers here for the Wildcats. Breaking away inside the 30, inside the 40, down to the 36 yard line. Didn't hear much of Matthew Morrison's name a few weeks ago, but he makes the catch there and it's a first down for the Wildcats. Inside Glens Falls territory. About a 21 yard gain. Clock running 112 left, no huddle here for the Wildcats. Carmody, pressure throws, and the pass is incomplete. Pressure coming on, intended for Easter, who has two touchdowns here in this first half already. And Carmody had to get rid of that one before he was bought down himself. Clock now stopped, 57 seconds left here in the first half. Wildcats looking to extend on their 21-7 lead here with the winless defending champion, Glens Falls Green Jackets. Again, the latest update from Bennington, Vermont, is the Southern Vermont Storm Trail, the road on the riptide. For 14 to 7. Oh, score crush. 14 to 7. We were 14 to 10 earlier. Nonetheless, the 3 0 Southern Vermont Storm found themselves down to the 1 2 Riptide. Riptide looking to pull off a big win out in Vermont. Stay tuned for updates as they become available. Here in Worcester, we have a second down to 10. 57 seconds left. A 21 7 lead for the Worcester Wildcats over the Glens Falls Green Jackets. Carmody. That pass is knocked in the air and eats the ground. Dangerous pass there, but a nice play there for number 97 for the Green Jackets. And there's Isaiah Stevens knocking that one away. It'll be third down and 10 here. Clock's still running with about 50 seconds left. Big third down here for both sides. Now the clock is now stopped with 44 seconds left. 
Wildcats facing a big third down here. Green Jackets looking to make a big stop, potentially get the ball back. They have three timeouts yet. It looks like the rush might be asking him to reset the clock. Currently it's 44 seconds here in the half. Now they're speaking to head coach of the, and the owner of the Worcester Wildcats, Dennis Faulkner. And they're going to keep it at 44 seconds, so I'm not sure what the ref and Calker are talking about. But it is a third down for the Wildcats at the 36-yard line. Up 21-7 here toward the end of the half. And now they now they reset the clock, 52 seconds left. Looking at a big stop here. Needed for the Glens Falls defense. Carmody steps up and flips it to Givens Perry who makes the catch but he goes absolutely nowhere. Actually loses a couple yards and there's the big stop by the Glens Falls defense. And the clock's going to continue to run under 40 seconds left. And it looks like I believe Worcester called timeout, and they did. So with 34 seconds, that's right back. You're watching the New England Football League. We're here in the New England Broadcast Network. And the Wildcat offense stays out there for this fourth down at 13 with 34 seconds left. Ball at the 36-yard line. Interesting play call here by Dennis Faulkner and the Wildcat offense. Carmody. Over the middle. Wide open McNeil. McNeil. Tim O'Neill with a catch down to the 10. What a play by the walkout offense. Tim O'Neill with the catch. It's a 26 yard gain on a fourth down. Wildcats in business. With 26 seconds left. Clutch Falls needed to make the stop there. They weren't able to and now the Wildcats have a first and goal at the 10 with 26 seconds left. What a play there. It looked like for a second there, O'Neal was about to drop that one, but he was able to hang on to it. A great play there by Tim O'Neal. Again, okay, with 26 seconds left and a 21-7 lead, the Wildcats have the ball at the 10-yard line. First and goal. Once again, the Green Jackets defense looking to make a big stop here at the end of the half. Trying to avoid falling into an even deeper hole they are in right now. Wait for the whistle. And there it is. First and goal from the 10. Worcester leading 21-7. 26 seconds left in the half. Smith coming in motion. And Carmody fakes, gonna roll to his left, left and he's gonna run. And it looks like he fumbled the football. Ball is on the ground, the Green Jackets have recovered. A huge play for Glens Falls defense. They make a stop they absolutely needed. And with 19 seconds left here in the half, they have the football. What a play there. The Wildcats are trying to run out the clock. Looking to give Yanka a chance at a field goal. But instead. Glenn's false defense fumble, forcing a fumble, recovering it. And they have the ball at their own eight yard line with 19 seconds left. And all three timeouts. Let's see if they take a knee here or they go for some big plays here at the end of the half. We're we'll about to find out. But again, a huge play there, keeping the Wildcats out of the end zone here at the end of the half. Stopping them from extending on that lead that they have. It's 21 to seven with 19 seconds left. Condon is in the shotgun, first down at the eight yard line. Low snap then, they're just gonna hand it off here to Presido Jr. Breaking tackles and he'll get to the 15. And that'll be the end of the first half, folks. What's the Wildcats got off to a hot start. Glens Falls cut the lead in half, but Carmody threw his second touchdown to Asante Easter. They were about to extend on their lead here at the end of the half, but a big fumble covered by the Green Jackets runs out the first half. With the Wildcats lead 21-7 at the end of the half. We'll be right back for our halftime report. 
Don't go anywhere. You're watching the New England Football League. We're here in the New England Broadcast Network. And welcome you back inside our broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Steven Earl, the Worcester Wildcats. Currently, the Glens Falls Green Jack is 21 to 7 at halftime, but it could have been a much bigger halftime lead for the Wildcats as they had a couple drop touchdown passes and one called back due to holding. They also had a fumble in the red zone in the final seconds of the half, recovered by the Glens Falls defense, who were down 14 0 at one point before Caleb Conn found his top receiver, John White Mostazinski, for a long touchdown to cut it to a 14 7 lead. Meanwhile, the Worcester offense has. Three touchdowns. Danny Gavitz Perry scoring the first one the day before his 29th birthday. And Tim Carmody has two touchdown passes, both of them going to his backup quarterback, Asante Easter. So the Wildcats currently 21 7 here at halftime. Let's see if the Glens Falls Green Jackets can make a comeback and get that first win of the season. We're ready to go. Second half coming up. We are ready for the second half, everybody. The Glens Falls Green Jackets kicking off to the Worcester Wildcats. will lead 21 7 here. Start the second half, and it looks like they're. There's David Jones on the return. We'll zoom in here. David Jones coming to the side, down the sideline, breaking away from a tackle. Flag is down. J Jones still going inside the 40 to the 42, but this one is going to be coming back. It's going to be against the Wildcats. It's going to be a hold, it looks like. Once again, everybody, welcome you back in. I'm Stephen Irwin. We are here in Worcester, Massachusetts for this game between the Worcester Wildcats and the Glens Falls Green Jackets. Wildcats currently at 21 to seven, and it could have been a much bigger halftime lead for them. Had a couple touchdown drops, and a one call back. George Smith almost had his fifth touchdown in the last two games, but a hold against the Worcester in the at the end of the half took one away. And then at the end of the half, they fumbled the football, and Glens Falls recovered. So Glens Falls really considering themselves lucky that it is only four, 21 to seven, not. 41 to 7 or anything along those lines. They're still very much in this game as we start this second half. Wildcats do start with the football as they defer to the second half. They have the ball at the 27 yard line. And here there, and let's see who's in. It is Carmody back in at quarterback for the Wildcats. Santa gives Perry, who scored the first touchdown of the game, is in the backfield. Rosario. Pitch, pitch out to Rosario. Manny Rosario, first time calling his name. And there goes Rosario cutting to the outside. To outside. Out of bounds at the 35. Gain of eight there. And the first touch of the football there by Manuel Rosario. A veteran here for the Wildcats. Have been here over the last few seasons. The Worcester Wildcats. The latest update from Bennington, Vermont. Southern Vermont Storm have tied the game. With the Rolling Rip Tide. It is 14 all. May have to stay tuned for updates on the official NEFL players forum for the rest of the game. But once again, it is 14 all between the Storm and the Riptide as of right now. Here in Worcester, it's 21-7. The Wildcats and the Green Jackets, both games tonight have a combined 56 points. Each, each game is 28 points. Of course, tomorrow the Ravens will host the Bombers out of Norwich University in Burlington, Vermont. Armani pressure, down he goes. Huge sack there, number 11 coming away with the sack and there is Tony Green Jr. again. Bring it even longer, third down here for the Wildcat offense. Glens Falls, again they almost fell down by a whole lot more than they are down right now. Had a touchdown drop earlier in the game and then the fumble at the end of the half. Worcester has two touchdowns that have come off the board here in this in that first half. So it could easily be 35-7 right now. But now being just a 14-point game, Wildcats, Tony Green Jr. coming up to the first sack of the game for either side. Third down and 12 here coming up. Ball is at back at the 25. And it's gonna be, it looks like it should be an out to false start against the Wildcats. Looks like for a sec, it's a clear off sides, but they're gonna get the Wildcats. So it's gonna be third down and 17 now for Worcester. Bagging themselves up here on this first drive of the second half. Glens Falls will certainly take it. As they look to make a stop here, get the ball back for their offense down by 14. And the last play there, a sack by Tony Green Jr. Won a championship last year with the Green Jackets. Third down at 17. Now balls back at the 20 as we reach the 12.50 mark here in the third quarter.
First sack for either side coming on that last play. Third down and a minivan here for the for the Wildcats. Back at their own 20. Carmody. Pressure throws. Pass caught by Smith. George Smith is sixth catch. Breaking up tackles. Two flags down. Smith still going to the 35. As of right now, Smith is going to be about two yards short of a first down. But what a play. What an effort there by Carmody. Getting rid of that football. Smith coming back to it. Managing extra, extra yards. There is a flag down. There are two flags down. So let's check the markers. And that's a hold against the Wildcats. But is there, there were two flags. There might be one here against Glens Falls as well. See if we have playing penalties and look like we might not. 12.07 left here in the third quarter. Wildcats lead 21 to 7. And they're going to back them up even more. It's going to be third down and a mile. <laughs> so after that play there by Smith, the ball is back at the 21 yard line. So it's basically nothing. Nothing really happened on that play, basically. Third down and forever for the Wildcats. Ball back at their own 20 yard line. Carmody steps up, chucking it down the field, has his man, and it's incomplete. Contact, no flags. Wildcats looking for a flag there as contact against Smith, but they're not going to get one. So it's going to be a fourth down in a minivan for the Wildcat offense. They're going to put this ball away most, most certainly. And now it looks like there is a flag down at about the 45 yard line. And they are gonna get the contact against the Green Jacket. So a big break there for the Worcester offense. And it looked up here, up here in the booth, there was definitely a lot of contact. Definitely should have drawn a flag and it definitely did. So shout out to the refs for doing their job right. And it's gonna be a so they're calling it a 15 yard penalty. They're going to go NCAA rules here. 15 yard penalty. First down, Worcester. A big break there for the Wildcat offense. Up 21 to 7, 11 42 left here in the half. Look like one of the defenders for the Green Jackets has an arm around Smith's neck. Around the back of Smith's neck, I should say. As he tried to knock that ball away. So that was a great call there by the refs. Glad they got it right. So first down for the Wildcats. Ball is at the 36. A 15-yard penalty on a third down. It was third down at 17. But the penalty is an automatic first down. So nonetheless, it was an automatic first down for the Wildcats coming up. And now they have the ball at their own 36. We're going to see what's going on here. Stop your play. And now they're telling the Elks, now they're telling the chain guys, hey guys, move on up, will you? And move off a little further. And they switch from third down to first down. So now we get it going here. We're back to action. 11 and a half left here in the third quarter. 21 to 7. Worcester Wildcats lead the Glens Falls Green Jackets. They just got a huge penalty go against Glens Falls. Pass interference, 15 yard penalty, first down. And now the Wildcats staying alive here on this drive. Modding the shotgun. There's Stephen Gibbons Perry in the backfield. Mighty fakes, throws short, pass caught. And there's Smith again down the sideline. There goes Smith. Still going into Glens Falls territory inside the 40. Out of bounds, about the other side of the Glens Falls 36 yard line. What's over there? They officially placed the football. That's a big play there. Another one for George Smith. It's another first down. We've reached the 11 minute mark. And if I'm not mistaken, folks, we'll look back at the highlight tape later. That is Smith's seventh catch of the night. So while he has not caught a touchdown yet, he has seven catches in this game so far. Another impressive outing for the newcomer from the East Coast Cardinals, two-time spring champions. 
ball officially at the 41-yard line, so about five yards. Must have stepped out of bounds somewhere about five yards back from where we thought he was. Carmody hands off to Givens. Perry. And Perry breaking off tackles. Look at a run here. Now it goes Perry down the sideline. One man to beat. Breaks it off, and he stepped out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds at about the seven-yard line. But Sandy Givens Perry, another big run. Celebrating his 29th birthday tomorrow. Having a big game here tonight. And it's going to be first and goal. Worcester balls officially at the seven. Looking to correct their mistakes from at the end of the half when they fumbled the football about the same spot. And the Grunsfeld's Green Jackets were able to run out the clock at the end. And if you hear any buzzing, folks, I have a miniature fan blowing at me. I do apologize, but it is about a humid 88 degrees here in Worcester. So, yes, I have a fan. You know what they say, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Officially first time goal here for the Wildcats. Ball at the seven-yard line. 9.40 left here in the third quarter. Big run there by Xander Givens Perry. Show him what he does best. Wildcats looking to stand on their lead. Currently 21 to 7. Givens Perry's once again in the backfield. Carmody in the shotgun. Carmody hands off to Givens Perry. Cut it breaks off. Oh, he tried. Oh, there he goes. It does break away from one tackle. Tried another. And now the entire Glens Falls defense is there trying to make the stop. And they finally bring him down after a gain of a couple. So this drive really should have ended deep in Worcester territory, but a 15-yard penalty on a penalty against George Smith, who then took the ball deep into Glens Falls territory. And that's where we lead, that's where we stand right now. A 15-yard penalty, a big play for the Worcester offense. Uh, we've got again a gain of a couple there. There's eight and a half left here in the third quarter. The Wildcats lead 21 to 7 against the Glens Falls Green Jackets. You're watching the New England Football League on the New England Broadcast Network. I'm Stephen R. We're here at Berkshire Bank Field, the General Foley Stadium in Worcester, Massachusetts. You know the other game going on tonight? Well, there are two games going on tonight, actually. Oh, no, just one. This game, and then, of course, the Storm taking on the riptide. Tomorrow, the Ravens will host the Bombers. Second and goal at the five. Carmody hands off again to give it to Perry. Perry up the middle. Perry for a touchdown. There he is again. Xander Givens Perry, his second touchdown of the night. And the Wildcats extend on their lead now 27 to 7. A couple big runs for the man, the Mitchell Legend, and now he has two touchdowns on the ground here tonight thus far. And the Wildcats extend their lead 27-7. Once again, could be a much bigger lead had a few things gone Worcester's way. But the Glensville's Green Jackets have done the job they needed to do thus far. Here comes Bianca for the extra point. Bianca, excuse me. High snap. And the kick is blocked. It's actually picked up by Brian Portfield. Looks like number 28. And the kick is no good. And no one less. So the Worcester Wildcats lead is now 27-7. A big drive. Helped out by a 15-yard pass interference penalty. Xander Gibbons Perry scoring his second touchdown of the night. Again, Worcester leads 27-7 over the Glens Falls Green Jackets. We'll be right back. You're watching the NFL on NBN. 27-7. The Worcester Wildcats lead the Glens Falls Green Jackets. You're watching the NFL on NBN. I'm Stephen Err. And that ball is going way over the head of Szynski. It's going to roll into the end zone. And let's see if Szynski takes it out. No, he does not. It takes a knee. And so a touchback. And the Glens Falls Green Jackets will start this next drive at the 20. Danny Gibbons Perry, his second touchdown the day before his 29th birthday. So once again, we'll be the first to wish Danny Gibbons Perry a happy 29th birthday. And I don't mean it to my own horror folks, but next Monday, July 22nd, is my 30th birthday. The England Football League on NBA, NFL on NBA will be off next week. So I'm covering Arena Bowl 33 at the American Dream Mall in East Rutherford, New Jersey on Friday, July 19th. I'll be attending a housewarming on July 20th. And July 21st, we'll be at the A7FL, the American 7 Football League Championship Game in Asbury Park, New Jersey. It's my third birthday we'll be spent in New York City. It'll be a travel day back here to Massachusetts to begin a new decade. 
So once again, 30th birthday for moi, Monday, July 22nd. This is my last broadcast here in my 20s. First down at the 25 officially, handoff here to Presido Jr. And he gets, fumble the football! Let's check the, with the refs, let's see what they say. And it looks like the Wildcats do recover. Coming away with the football is William Fitz, number one. And Worcester offense coming back out with a 27-7 lead. When we come back, you're watching the NFL and NBN. Wildcats recovering yet another fumble. Their second here tonight. And now there is Asante Easter in the quarterback for the Wildcats. 751 left third quarter. It's 27-7 Worcester. And Easter's gonna hand off. No, he's gonna fake. He's gonna roll out. And down he goes. The second sack tonight for Glens Falls defense. Number four coming away with that one. That is Connor Hermanson. Hermanson, I don't know. And so a second sack here tonight for the Glens Falls defense. As Easter now in a quarterback here for the Worcester Wildcats. Seven and a half left here at their quarter and a 27-7 lead. Saw a two quarterback system last week, or two weeks ago, excuse me. I keep saying last week. I forgot we had a league wide by last week. Wildcats had a two quarterback system in their game two weeks ago against the Royal and Riptide. And it led to a big victory here in Worcester. Easter chucking it to the end zone. The pass is intercepted. And taking a knee there is the Glens Falls defender. Can't see a number. That's his pick by number 20. And so, Glens Falls defense makes another stop. Right after giving it away, they get it back. Glens Falls offense comes back out. 6.53 left in the third quarter. When we come back, you're watching the New England Football League. We're here in the New England Broadcast Network. Pass was intercepted by Brian Thomas officially for the Glens Falls Green Jacket. So back-to-back -back turnovers here by both teams. 27-7 series score, 6 to that third quarter. Watching the NFL and NBN, I'm Steven Everybody. Thank you for joining us here in Worcester, Massachusetts. First down at the nine yard line for the Green Jackets. And a handoff here. That's the number 21, that is not McLaughlin. I got him mixed up, it's Quentin Austin. Green Jackets do have two number 21s listed on their roster. The linebacker is number 21, that is McLaughlin. Number 21, the running back here for the Green Jackets it's Quentin Austin. Six and a half left here in the third quarter. So back-to-back -back turnovers. Glens Falls doing all they can do to keep themselves in it despite being down by 20 points here mid in the latter part of the third quarter. A gain of 10 on that run bear by Austin. So first and 10 at the 19-yard line. Condon pitch out. There's Presido Jr. And he gets to about the 20 yard line. Looks like for a second he might have fumbled again, but he didn't. The way he dove though from up here in the broadcast booth, we could see it. Looked like that ball was ready to leave his hands. That would have been his second fumble in his last about four carries. No fumble there. Ball is at the 21 yard line. Especially gained a two on that play. Second and eight, we are at five and a half left here in the third quarter. Wildcats looking to get to two and one on the season. Glens Falls looking to avoid an 0 and three start after winning the championship game in 2023. Get to more of week five coming up next week. A little later, as again, we will be off next week. Be back July 27th for week number six in the New England Football League. Second and eight. Condon. There's a handoff to Presido. And Presido is brought down from behind. Play there by number 70 for, for the Wildcats. We have a name here for number 70. We do believe we do. And that is Tyler Alderman. Again, his first season here in Worcester with the Wildcats. Bringing down the NEFL All Star from last season. Third down and seven. Officially gained of just one on that play. For Glens Falls, and this is a big third down for Glens Falls. They're down by 20 points here in the latter part of the third quarter, so they need to get something done here. Keep them keep themselves alive in this game at this point. Third 
Third down and seven at the 22 yard line. Need a big play here. Oh, we have a guy coming in motion. Condon pressure. Rolling out to his right. Throwing over the middle, and the pass is caught. Looked like it was Tuzinski, and it was. There's a flag down, however, so hold on. It looks like it's going to be against the Wildcats. He got everybody headed. Looks like one of the referees headed toward midfield, so. Flag is down. Might have just picked it up. Might not even be a penalty at all. And now they will move the football. So there was a penalty against Worcester, and it's a big penalty too because they placed the ball at the 49 yard line. We have 319 left here in the third quarter. Glens Falls trailing 27 7 against the Wildcats. So again, an AFL week four. We have this game between the Wildcats and the Rip and the Glens Falls Green Jack, excuse me, the Rip Tide. All right, and Spaddington, Vermont, again, taking on the Southern Vermont Storm. And tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern at Norwich University, the Vermont Ravens will host the New England Bombers. Bombers playing their first game in three weeks. Bombers have not played since their 28-0 home loss against the Southern Vermont Storm back on June 22nd. And now they're checking down in the clock. Operators set the clock to three minutes and 28 seconds. We'll put nine seconds back on the clock. Walk out still 27 to 7. Clock is stopped as of right now, but down by three scores. This is the drive where Glens Falls needs to get something done here to keep themselves alive. Let's see what they can do. Whistle blows are ready to go here. Clock still up. There you go. 3.28 left here in the third quarter. Lutz Falls have the ball at their own 49-yard line following a penalty against the Wildcats. Two receivers to each side. Hand off here. Bouncing off is Austin. Austin is wrapped up. Big play there for the big man, Robert Baldwin. Bring up second down. Austin lost a couple on that one, and we're about to hit the three man mark here in the third quarter. And he literally lost a couple balls back at the 47. Looks like Lens Falls doing a little, little huddle here. Trying to throw the Wildcats off. Condon, plenty of time, throws short, passes dropped. An intended for number nine, that is Rashad Colson, who is also listed as a quarterback. Condon had plenty of time in the pocket and that pass was, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure he could have gone deep if he wanted to. Must. Now third down and 12 here. This is the biggest play of the game thus far for the Green Jack. He's down by 20. Two and a half left here in the third quarter. Need to make a big play here. Wouldn't be surprised if they went for it on fourth down here either. Down by 20 points, two, about, about to hit the two minute mark here. Third quarter, apologize to the camera. Third down and 12 at the 47 as we reach the two minute morning here in the third. Condon looked like he was ready for the snap. Pressure rolling out, here comes Colston. Throws off his back foot and what a catch. Pass called by Colston. 
redeeming himself. And he gets into Worcester territory. He gets the first down for the Green Jackets. And that is the biggest play of the game for Glens Falls. They needed that one. Keep themselves alive here. And now have the ball at the Worcester 40 yard line. Minute and a half left third quarter. Condon was not ready for that snap, you can tell. Looked like he was looking toward his left. And the ball was snapped. It hit him right in the chest. He was able to get under it and threw that pass off his back foot. And a big play there for the Golden Falls offense. First down at the Worcester 40. Another handoff here, there is once again, Austin inside the 30 to the 27. Another big first down for the Glens Falls offense, looking to stay alive. So we are now under the final minute here in the third quarter. Might get one more, maybe two plays off here before the end of the quarter. So we're about to hit 30 seconds left here in this third quarter. Let's walk out still lead the Gunsville's Green Jackets 27 to 7. Watch the New England Football League. We're here in the New England Broadcast Network. I'm Stephen Err. Thank you for joining us. We're here at Berkshire Bank Field at General Foley Stadium in Worcester, Massachusetts. Home to many Worcester Public Schools sports as well. Soccer, football, and maybe even field hockey. <laughs> Not exactly sure. Here we go. Let's see if the Gunsville's Green Jackets get off one more play before the end of the third. They do. Condon throws. Short pass caught. There's Tazinski trying to go down the sideline. Gets out of bounds inside the 25. Now it'll end the third quarter. What's the Wildcats lead? The Glens Falls Green Jackets 27 7 after three. We'll be back for the fourth and final quarter right here in the New England Broadcast Network. Start of the fourth and final quarter, everybody. The What's the Wildcats lead? The Glens Falls Green Jackets 27 7. You're watching the NFL and NBN. I'm Stephen Err. Second on three here. Handoff again. There is. Procedo Jr. breaking off tackle, spinning away inside the five, down to about the four yard line. And a big play there for the NFL All-Star from 2023. A huge run, and it's first and goal for the Green Jackets. Their first first and goal here of the game comes in the fourth quarter. So they are down, folks, but they are not out. Do not go anywhere. See some crazy comebacks in our days. See if the Glens Falls Green Jackets have one in them as they look for again. They're looking for that first win of the season here tonight in Worcester. They're 0 2, 0 2 thus far, losing their first game at Middleborough, Massachusetts, 18 14 to the Middleborough Cobras. And then a blowout loss week number two, or week number three, excuse me, 35 14 to the Southern Vermont Storm in their home opener. Had the week two off due to the Warriors not being able to play this season, giving them a unscheduled bye week. First and goal at the four. Condon floats it end zone and the pass is incomplete. Overthrowing his favorite target, Sizinski again. We come second on goal. So once again, folks, the NFL and NBN will be off next week. We'll be back July 27th as the Middleborough Cobras travel to Cranston Rhode Island, take on the Rhode Island Riptide. Will be a very interesting game. We'll have a lot to talk about during that one. And while we have a moment, there are a few things I'm going to get to, folks. I forgot to mention this earlier, but the Maine Mayhem are taking on the Cincinnati Cougars in the WFA North Division. North, let me check if I have it right here. The National Conference Championship game in the Women's Football Alliance out in Lewiston, Maine. If they win, they go to the 2024 Division Three Championship game out in Canton, Ohio next weekend or weekend after. So best of luck to the Maine Mayhem as they look to go to the championship game taking on the Cincinnati Cougars. Second goal at the four here for the Glensville's Green Jackets for win number one. And handoff here to Presido Jr. Busted off some tackles. Presido Jr. into the end zone for the touchdown. And a four-yard run there by the 2023 NFL, NFL All-Star. Makes it a 27-13 game here in the fourth. I forgot to mention his name here. We finally got it. Alexander Roca is the kicker for the Glens Falls Green Jackets. He's coming off for this extra point here. We have 13-08 left in this ball game. 27-13. The Wildcats lead the Green Jackets. So a little blur there, folks. Trying to get rid of that. 
hopefully you'll be able to see it just fine, no problems. And here's Alexander Roca come up for the extra point. And the kick is good. James Presido Jr. Second score of the game for the Green Jackets. They still trail 27 14. 13 left in this one. We'll be right back. You're watching the NFL and Eddie Bien. Mr. Wildcats lead the Glens Falls Green Jackets 27 14. 13 away left here in the surprise onside kick here. That's a live football. Let's see who gets on top of it. It looks like Worcester did initially, but let's see. We're going to zoom in and find out in a moment. Flag is down. Clock stop at exactly 13 minutes left. Let's see who has the football. It looks like the Wildcats jumped on top of it at first, and it looks like their offense is coming out here. It's like they did to recover this, this onside kick. Nice move there by Glens Falls, trying to get the football back down by 13 here in the fourth quarter. And looking for a second there, they might have recovered their own surprise onside, but uh, it looks like the Wildcats did eventually get on top of it. There are, there's a flag down, there's a hold. And they're calling a hold against the Wildcats. I'm not exactly sure. I believe the Wildcats still have the football. They did recover the surprise onside there by Glens Falls, but I'm not sure where the ball would be placed at this point. And you see everybody backing up there for Worcester. We'll follow them. Clock stop exactly 13 minutes left with the 27-14 lead. Wildcats looking to get to 2-1 on the season. Once again, folks, if you missed the, what I just mentioned before, this first, the last touchdown, the main mayhem of the Women's Football Alliance is fighting for the National Conference Championship against the Cincinnati Cougars out in Lewiston, Maine, about 40 minutes away from Portland, Maine. Winner of that game advances to the WFA Division III Championship game out in Canton, Ohio, which will be played at the Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium, where the Hall of Fame game will be played between the Houston Texans and Chicago Bears on August 1st. First down, Worcester. Easter is going to take off. He was all on the shotgun. He's going to take off himself and get to about the 33-yard line. Again, okay, gave him a couple there. Yes, folks, you heard that right. The 2024 NFL Preseason Hall of Fame game is about, took my math here, about three and a half weeks away, if I'm not mistaken, maybe two and a half weeks away. About three and a half weeks away. Chicago Bears, Houston Texans, August 1st from the Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium in Canton, Ohio. Game is being broadcast this year by ESPN. It's not being broadcast by NBC, which it had been for the last you know, many, many, many years. ESPN has taken over that spot from NBC. The real winner will be on February 9th, 2025, as Fox has Super Bowl 59 out in New Orleans this year. This threw me off. I thought that NBC had the Super Bowl this year. Would have gone well with them having Paris Olympics coming up. And then Super Bowl 59, but they have Super Bowl 60 next year. And they're on second down. Easter goes down. The third sack of the day here for the Glens Falls defense. Once again, it's Hermanson. And I'm hoping saying that last name right. Connor Hermanson come away with a sack there. So now it's third down and eight here. This is a big, once again, a big play here for the Glens Falls defense now. Their offense was able to put points on the board, make it a 27-14 game. And after not being able to recover the onside kick, let's see if they can make a stop here in order to get the ball back for their offense. Let's match a little bit, get a better, better, better view than what we had. Much better. Third down at 16. Easter rolling out. Throws, pass is caught by Givens Perry. Now, oh, excuse me, that's Curtis Gordon, Curtis Gordon Wilson with the catch. But he is going to be about halfway short of a first down. Clock now running under 11 minutes left, so. And for the first time tonight, we're going to see Worcester punt to football. We're going to zoom out for that punt. So Glens Falls defense makes the stop they needed, getting their offense the ball back. And we'll move our camera over here. As you see, we'll zoom in once again. Let me just a little more. You might be able to see it. That is John Stazinski. There you go, number 84, ready to return this punt. Now we'll zoom out back again and get back over to the punt. We'll be taken by number six, Nicholas Selig. 
This is a fullback as well as the punt man for the Wildcats. And it's their first part of the night. 10-25 left here in the fourth. 27-14. And gets it away. Nice punt there. A little short. And this one's going to take a bounce at the 39-yard line. So that's where Glensville's offense will come out. Down by 13 with 10-10 left in the game. Are we about to see a comeback? Well, there's only one way to find out. We'll be right back. You're watching the New England Football League right here in the New England Broadcast Network. This game's got a little more interesting, folks. 27-14, the Wildcats lead the Green Jackets. The Green Jackets just forced the first Worcester punt of the night. Let's see if they can do something with it. Ball to 39. Cotton fakes, chucking it down the sideline. Has a man. It's caught. John Staszynski down inside the five. A huge play for the Green Jackets. A gain of about 59 yards. First and goal, Glens falls at the two yard line. And they're officially putting it about the eight yard line. By a gain of 53 yards. What a play for the first play of the drive. Look at him spark a comeback here. Condon finding his man, John Staszynski for the huge gain. And now officially he's at the three yard line, so it was about 58 yard play, 57 yard pass play. First and goal, hand out to Brasito Jr. Breaking off tackles, and Brasito Jr. into the end zone. Touchdown, Glens Falls. And ladies and gentlemen, do not go anywhere. It is a seven point game just like that. The 57-yard pass play from Condon to Zizinski sets up Presido's second touchdown of the night. And the Glading Jackets are right back in it. What's well, it gonna be Roca coming off of the extra point, making this a six-point game with 9-13 left in this one. To be a very important next try for both sides coming up. You won't want to miss it. And there's Tzinski to hold. Low snap. Kick is. No good. And so it's a seven point game. 27, 29, 13 left. This game ain't over yet. Not by a long shot. We'll be right back. You're watching the New England Football League. We're here in the New England Broadcast Network. 14 points. And just under six minutes, another onside kick here. This one picked up by Worcester. And breaking away. Can't see who that is, but the Wildcats will have the ball inside Glens Falls territory to start this next drive. 14 points scored by the Green Jackets. Just under six minutes of playtime play here, making it a 27-20 game. Down by, down by 20 here to start this third quarter. They've made it a game. Let's see if the Wildcats and chew up some clock, score another touchdown to put this, potentially put this one away. I won't say most definitely, but we shall see. So plenty of time left, 9.04 and counting. Well, the clock is now stopping 9.04. 9.04 left here in the fourth. It's a one score game, folks. Like I said, don't go anywhere. We're waiting for a very exciting finish here in Worcester. We've seen a few of those in our time. Now the Wildcats have the ball at the Glens Falls 43 yard line. And it looks like Carmody's back in the game at quarterback. And he's going to throw a short pass caught. And it looks like Smith again and wrapped up. No flags. Look at my bet. It might have been a face mask, but the refs didn't call anything. So a gain of a few there. And once again, it's George Smith that's catch number eight for him on the night. And of second down. So once again, the Wildcats led 27-7 entering the fourth quarter. It's now just a seven-point game. Glens Falls has scored the last 13 points at this football game, including forcing Worcester's first punt of the night. They're going to make another big stop here on this drive. Second down at seven here. At the 40. And 
And Carmody's going to hand off to Givens Perry, who breaks off tackles. Been doing that all night. There goes Givens Perry down the sideline. Still going. And finally tripped up in about the 20-yard line. What a run there by Jander Givens Perry, who was celebrating again, once again, celebrating his 29th birthday tomorrow. By the way, the other guy sharing a birthday with him, found out number five is Darius Givens. So once again, happy birthday to both of those guys. Hope you enjoy your special days. And another holding call against the Wildcats to back them up. So the big gain there by Zevens Perry is taken away. So they'll face a second down and long here with clock stop with exactly eight minutes left. And now they're telling the scoreboard to run the clock and that's exactly what he'll do. Lights are on here. The sun is gone. It's still humid here in Worcester. About 81 degrees. And it will be about a second out of seven there after the long run by Gibbs Perry. Ball back at the 47-yard line, still in Glens Falls territory. There's Solano in the backfield. Carmati throws, short pass is caught by Solano, but he only gets about a yard. He's brought down by Todd Perito. And so here is, comes a huge third down for both sides here. Guns Falls looking to make a stop on defense, get their offense the ball back, down by seven. And here we are now in the latter half of the fourth quarter, so this is a huge play for both sides. So I can most definitely say now, folks, we are in for an exciting finish. Do not go anywhere. You don't want to miss the end of this one. Third down at 16, officially ball at the Glens Falls 49. Clock and tuning to wide nine. You see 6.45 now and counting. Here we go, huge third down for both sides. Third down and 16. Carmati pumps throws over the middle, passes dropped. Manuel Rosario cannot hang on. Would have been a huge first down for the Wildcats, but instead the Glens Falls Green Jackets will celebrate a victory here. It's going to be fourth down, and their offense getting the ball back in a seven-point game, 6:22 left. So that was a huge play there, the Glens Falls defense. Once again, Sell come out for a second punt here in the fourth quarter alone. He didn't have any punts those first three quarters. Now clock attuning to run here. 6.15 and counting here in the fourth. So this next drive is going to be a huge one for the Glens Falls Green Jackets. Looking to tie this game up. High snap. And the kick is blocked. Kick is blocked and recovered by the Green Jackets. And another huge play for Glens Falls. With 5.56 left. Selig looking for a flag or something. Asking what has happened, what's going on here? And the Green Jackets are going to have excellent field position. They look to tie this game up. We'll be right back. You're watching the New England Football League. We're here in the New England Broadcast Network. So Glens Falls will start at the Worcester 38 yard line after blocking that punt. 5.56 left here in the game. Condon fakes, throws short, and the pass is dropped by Tizinski, who a diving attempt, but no good. So clock's off, 5.51 left. So once again, folks, it was 27-7 Worcester at the end of the third quarter. With 5.50 left in count now, with the clock now running, Glens Falls has a chance to tie this game up here in the end. What a comeback by the defending North Atlantic Division champions. Looking for that first win of the season. It'll be second down and 10 at the 38, following the incompletion. It's a match a little bit. Presido coming in motion. They're going to hand off to Presido. And he fumbled the football, but somebody was able to pick it up for Glens Falls. So, Ben, a big break there for the Green Jackets. And that was the second time Presido fumbled this football in this game. This time, somebody, it might have been him, was able to come up with it.
Clock continues to run under five minutes now. But now here's the big spot for the Green Jackets offense. They face the third down here. The ball is again at the 38, so it is third down and 10. So again, a big third down here for the Green Jacket offense. Big third down for the Worcester defense. Condon all on the shotgun on third down and 10. Condon. Rolling out. Chucking over the middle and nobody's there. And now a flag comes out. Two flags come out at the end. Looks like they may get a late hit or something against the Wildcats and that's going to extend this drive for Glens Falls. And it is against the Wildcats at Armac. First down for Glens Falls. That's a huge, huge break there for green, the Green Jackets. So they place the ball at the 28 yard line. And the flag was against Solano. He was playing running back for most of his game for the Wildcats. Now playing some defense. Clock stop, 4.06 left here in this one. It's 27 20, Glens Falls. Uh, Worcester, excuse me. Glens Falls looking to overcome a 20 point fourth quarter deficit. There's Austin in motion. Con Condon throws, short pass is dropped. Once again, it's Colson. another drop for him. Had a huge catch on a third down earlier in the game. Now that's the second drop, and the clock is stopped with 341 left. And Glenn Green Jack is looking to overcome a 20 point fourth quarter deficit, would be the biggest comeback thus far this season. Second and 10 here at the 23 yard line. James Presido Jr. has scored the last two touchdowns to close this gap to a seven point game for Glens Falls. And the defense has forced two Worcester punts here in the fourth quarter. Of course, we were there when the Brooklyn on the Riptide blew a 13 point fourth quarter lead against the Bombers, week number one out in Jamaica Plain. Well, the Wildcats blow a 20 point fourth quarter lead here in Worcester still plenty of time left to determine the winner here second and ten ball to 23 Condon plenty of time Rose over the middle tipped almost intercepted Marquise Colton was the guy in the vicinity and tipped away by who else but George Smith, who has eight catches on offense. Almost coming over with a big play there on defense for the Wildcats. And a flag comes out. Looks like there's another flag against the Wildcats. We're being told it is a sideline infraction against the Wildcats. Too many guys coming off that white line there as you see at the bottom of your screen. Clock stop, 332 left. Wildcats still lead at 27-20, but the Green Jackets are threatening at the Worcester 23-yard line. So no yards gained for the sideline infraction, just kind of a warning there. For the Wildcats stay on their own sideline. And once again, we'll see. Here now is, again, a big third down here once again for the Green Jackets. Let's see if they can tie this game up here at the end of this one. So here we go, folks. Third down and 10 balls at the 23-yard line.
Condon steps up over the middle. Pass is caught. There's Tzinska now saying incomplete. Coverage there. Once again, it's George Smith. And now a huge fourth down for the Green Jackets. And they're going to go for it here. 323 left in this one. Once down by 20. Do they have, do they have a comeback completion in them? We're about to find out. So coming out for this next play. Fourth down and 10. Lance Fossil has all three of their timeouts, so it's not over if they don't convert here. But the Wildcats have a chance to chew up the clock as much as they possibly can if the defense makes a big stop. Fourth and 10 from the 23 yard line. Condon pumps, chucking it to the end zone, and the pass is incomplete. The tenor for Stadzinski, he threw it out of bounds. Worcester's defense makes a stop. Their offense comes back out with 316 left and a seven point lead. We'll be right back. You're watching the NFL and NBN. Huge fourth down stop there for the Worcester defense. Their offense comes back out leading 27-20, 3.15 left in the fourth quarter. You watch the New England Football League on the New England Broadcast Network, everybody. I'm Stephen Err. Manager are coming in motion. Carmody going to pitch out to Marzario. And spinning away, breaking off a tackle. Still going and finally knocked down by number 11. But not before he gets near the 30-yard line, about the 28-yard line. And the clock will continue to run here with three minutes left. And now flag comes out. And by the cheer of the cowbells, it sounds like this one's going to be against Glens Falls. A little extracurricular after the play. It is unsportsmanlike against Worcester. And I, I hear the use in what? So initially thought a personal foul against the Green Jackets. It's actually against the Wildcats. And with the clock stop at three minutes left. These are not the types of things Worcester wants to be doing as they look to run out this clock and pick up their second win of the year. Of course, Glens Falls will take it, looking for that first win. Looking to make a big stop here on defense. Back to Wildcats up about 10, 15 yards. Clock still stopped with three minutes left here. Hey, Wildcats well, Cat, lead 27 to 20 over the Glens Falls Green Jackets. It's been an action-packed fourth quarter thus far. Green Jackets scored three. 13 unanswered points in about a six minute span, make it a seven point game. Had a chance to tie it up, but on fourth down, Caleb Condon's pass intended for John Stazinski went out of bounds and over the head of his top receiver. So second down 20 now, ball's at the 15 yard line. Three minutes left here in this game. And a little miscommunication. And Carmody runs for about maybe one if he got that. So now Glens Falls looking like they're about to pull off a big stop here. It's third down and forever. Wildcats can continue to run off this clock as much as they want. They cannot run into the two minute warning. We're at 2.40 left. And Glens Falls is not calling any of their timeouts. Looks like they want to save them for when their offense gets the ball back. They'll have one, chance, one another chance here. Tie this game and potentially even send it into overtime. Nonetheless, a very exciting fourth quarter here in Worcester between the Wildcats and Green Jackets. Third down and 20. And a whistle. See if anybody call a timeout. Clock stop 208 left. Again, the Wildcats could not run it down to the two-minute warning. Otherwise, they take a delay a game. Now we get back to the action. It's going to be the fun. Oh, now the clock is running. Let's see if they do get it to the two-minute warning. This would be a little shocker.
Clock is still running. Rest are not blowing it for a two-minute warning. Third down and 20 for Worcester. And Carmody chucking it on the sideline. Wide open, it's caught! And there he goes, all the way! Touchdown, Worcester! And guess who, folks? George Smith! What a way to put this game away for the Wildcats! An 85-yard touchdown. And it is now 33 to 20 with 132 left. What a play by Carmody. Fighting his man wide open. His top receiver the last couple weeks, George Smith. This touchdown will count. The last one did not. It was called back for holding. And again, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be all she wrote. Bearing any catastrophic meltdown by the Wildcats. They're going to hit to 2-1 and one after the end of this one. Glens Falls will fall to 0-3 oh on the season with a date with the Cobras coming up next weekend in Glens Falls. That'll be a huge game for Glens Falls next weekend. And the NFL and NBN will return July 27th as the Rhode Island Riptide hosts the Middleborough Cobras out in Cranston, Rhode Island. We will be off next week. Flags down, kick is... Well, I'm going to kick the flag down before the kick, so let's see. It looks like the... Well, let's see. Going for the call here on the penalty. And 85 yards to seal it for the Wildcats. Tim Carmody to George Smith. Fifth time in the last two games, those two have hooked up. Another high snap, and the kick is. Looks like it was blocked, and it was. The kick is no good. And 132 left in this one. The Worcester Wildcats headed toward 2-1 and one on the year. 33-20 is their lead. We'll be right back to wrap it up right here on the New England Broadcast Network. Worcester Wildcats lead. The Glens Falls Green Jackets 33-20 with 132 left here in this ball game. You're watching the New England Football League on the New England Broadcast Network. I'm Stephen Aaron. What a play there by Manuel Rosario wrapping up, the, wrapping up on the return. Glens Falls start this next drive at the 31-yard line. Clock now stop, 129 left. So it looked like for a moment there that the Glens Falls Green Jackets might have a chance to tie this game up, send it to overtime, but on a fourth down, a pass intended for John Stasinski goes out of bounds. And the Wildcats seal the game with an 85-yard touchdown from Tim Carmody to George Smith. The fifth touchdown for Smith in the last two games. Glens Falls will fall to 0-3 on the season with a gate with the Cobras coming up next week. Not sure who the Wildcats play or if they are off. And a timeout here by. The Glens Falls called a timeout here. So, want to be once again, the little, we'll be the last, first of all, to wish everybody a happy Fourth of July. We hope everybody enjoyed their Independence Day weekend. So, we'll visit some family in Virginia, including my brother in law who passed on May 14th. So I'm glad to see him. Happy early birthday to both Darius Givens, who turns 34 tomorrow, and Xander Givens Perry, who turns 29 tomorrow. And again, not to toot my own horn, but happy birthday to moi, who turns 30 on July 22nd. So the next time you see me, my first broadcast in my 30s. Still no play here yet. 
Green Jackets getting ready for the next one. 129 left here in this one. Again, an 85-yard touchdown from Carmody to George Smith. Wrapping it up here for the Wildcats. They'll win their second consecutive game. And I'm not sure if they're off next week or otherwise. But I do know the Green Jackets have a date with the Cobras out in Glens Falls. Second time those two teams will meet this season. Condon throws over the middle and the pass is caught wide open. Number 13 into Worcester territory down about the 47. And there's Isaiah McLaughlin with the catch into Worcester territory. Clock continues to run. Glens Falls going no huddle. That'll hit the one minute mark here in the fourth quarter. And officials, officials time out, so we'll take it with them. Clock's off 58 seconds left, so we'll be right back. You're watching the NFL and NBN. Early birthday gift for Xander Givens Perry and Darius Givens. Givens Perry, of course, scoring two touchdowns in this game here tonight for the Whistle Wildcats. The narrow under, they put the Put the clock to 102. Now we're under 50 seconds left as Condon throws. Pass is incomplete. Another diving attempt there for Sidinski. Clock's off 45 seconds left. Once again, the NFL and NBN will be back in two weeks' time, July 27th. As the Run on Riptide hosts the Middleborough Cobras. And we'll have a lot of stories for that game. It's the first time we've seen the Cobras, who are currently 3-0 on the season. They have the week off. They'll head to Glens Falls next week to take on these Green Jackets, who will fall to 0-3 on the on the season here tonight. By the way, congratulations to the Albany Firebirds. They headed to Arena Bowl 33 Friday, July 19th, with an 80 to 59 victory over the Salina Liberty in the semifinals. Game between the Billings Outlaws and Nashville Cats coming up 10 Eastern time on CBS Sports Network. Condon, pressure, and down he goes! Into the arms of Norberto Roland Jr. And a timeout by Glens Falls. And you hear some of the girls here in the crowd cheering, it's all over. Well, not exactly yet, girls. <laughs> we still have 34 seconds left, and a timeout called by Glens Falls. It'll be third down and 18, a loss of eight there on the sack by Norberto Roland Jr. All back at the 42 yard line. Again, stay tuned to the official NEFL Players Forum for updates from, Benning from Bennington, Vermont, between the Southern Vermont Storm and the Rhode Island Riptide. Last we heard, it was 14 all near halftime of that game, which has been dubbed Game of the Week. Back to the timeout. Third down and 18. Ball at the 47 yard line officially. And there's Austin in the backfield. And Condon throws short pass caught by McLaughlin. Trying to cut to the outside. Trying to break a tackle and is unable to. He actually lost the yard there. And there's Solano again coming up with the tackle. And let's see if we get one more, at least one more playoff here before the end of the game. It is now fourth down. So this is it basically right here for Glens Falls. Trying to get one more playoff for the end of the game. See if they're able to do it. Final 10 seconds. Fourth down and 18. This is going to be the last play of the game, folks, no matter what. Three, two, one, and last play of the game. Here we go. Condon steps up. Throws to the sideline. Pass is caught. And looks like... It's like Sizinski, it is down the sideline. Sizinski all the way. Touchdown, Glens Falls. On the last play of the game. Apologies, folks. Starting to zoom in. I zoomed out. And while they did get the last play, last they get the score on the last play, but unfortunately, folks, it's not enough here tonight. Let's see if they give them the extra point or they'd say wrap it up here. That's the end of the game.
Your final score, the Worcester Wildcats defeat the Glens Falls Green Jackets 33 to 26. For the Worcester Wildcats, for the Glens Falls Green Jackets, for the New England Football League, and of course the New England Broadcast Network, I'm Stephen Err. Happy birthday, Sandy Gibbons Perry. Happy birthday, Darius Gibbons, and happy birthday to yours truly. Good night from Worcester, Massachusetts.